Bristol scored from as they wide out as they on land. the other side. The last time they found themselves defending. Hold, hold. The line out Bath, they've got hold. to be stronger here. Lua Tua off the top to Hughes. And rampage towards the line, but again, the big hit, and Falatau can come away with it. Hamer Webb. making sure that there's no easy route out for Bath and they're being shoved back over their own try line. OK, nice and easy. We're going to go back, it's going to be Bath. Get the energy back. levels up, Bristol forward. very happy. Last just thought Nathan Hughes time. just got guilty there, carrying the ball in one, one arm. Could have just maybe... He's annoyed with himself and he's got every right to be because he was on a really good line, got on the outside shoulder of Miles Reid. Fair Miles Reid makes a good tackle on him, but... Nathan Hughes holds on to that, they recycle. I think they've, they've got opportunities to score there. Quick as you've ever moved. As they said, if you're looking for positives, and Bath fans will be at the moment, it is the hard work in defence. Mike Williams has come up with some big hits. Miles Reed, Stuart Hooper, name checked, and he was responsible for that one as well. Yeah, they are, but fortunately, they're having to do the work of others at the moment because Bristol, every time they get the ball earlier on in the plays, they're Breaking tackles, you think of that Piers O'Connor run a little while ago. Balance at every stage, please. Balance at every stage. looks dangerous, ball in hand. So, Luke Pierce with his beady eye on what, amazingly, after 33 minutes, is the first scrum of the match. Crouch. Five. So defensive one for Bath. Set. Stay behind the ball, both of you. Ben, get behind the ball. Mercer looking okay. to his left. Is that what Ben Spencer wants? And Stay the behind. Uren suggesting that um, Zach Mercer had his shoulders off the scrum there. Mercer, in the end, no. takes the responsibility Lola of bringing it away himself. Yeah, he's had to work hard there as well. Not much of a game. Bristol putting a lot of heat in the tackle and through the breakdown. And they oh, turned it over. Two. Yeah, Hughes has picked it up and our foe attack. Atwood, who flings it away to Lloyd, who didn't panic with the bouncing ball, and neither did O'Connor with one that was eager to evade his grasp. And here goes O'Connor again, and Piertau oh. wizards wherever you look. <laughs> and then a great big concrete mixer finishes the job. Brian Byrne, but you have to be entertained by what the Bears are about at the moment. It's ridiculous, it's almost unfair at the moment for me. You can't have this much time and space. I mean, it's brilliant, it's aggressive. Bath are neutral and passive. Bristol have been aggressive at everything they've done, and then they move the ball to space. Talk about this, just a little bit of individual brilliance. Chicken wing offload, Brian Byrne, thank you very much. Bonus point after 34 minutes. Their individual class and style is brilliant, but all within the team, it's it's been a masterclass so far. And the quickest bonus point of the season so far. Well, they, they looked hungry, you know, right from the start. In fact, they looked really hungry before kickoff. We talked about the energy and the noise and everything that they brought to their warm up, but you know, it's just a great balance to their play. Everyone wants to get their hands on the ball, the offloading game, but it's not just that. I mean, their ability at the breakdown. Nathan Hughes just bulldozed Falatau off the ball at the breakdown, turned the ball over and, as you say, they've got their rewards. Music thunders around the uh, Brentford Community Stadium. It does eventually go quiet. Mark Atkinson has an early touch on the ball and puts his eyes downfield and tries to find a hole. Use it! Willie Hines, try last weekend, but a bit more than that and early dropped down and I think it's Coleman who's injured himself in trying to get after it but it's so close and I think it's over an early score for Irish is it wow what a start for the home side almost caught everyone out and exactly the sort of start that Gloucester would have had nightmares about it was Coleman I think pulled up before the line I think he's going to limp off good original block but look at him shot by a sniper Blair Cowan, ah, that international experience, that now knew where the, the ball was, knew where the line was. And Blair Cowan opens London Irish's account just so got the this picture. afternoon. Just one second, I want a confirmation of Yuzi. Okay. Yuzi, have we checked everything? 
It might come at a cost, though, that opening score. Perfect, thanks. Tries good. Sorry, Dixie. He doesn't look in a good way. I was having to manage uh, Cowan for green yeah. and number four for grey, holding each other on the ground, instigated by grey. OK, and I've spoken to him already, but just to remind Cowan that we've seen him. <coughs> little chat there, Paul Dix uh, just communicating with uh, the referee about some afters. Paddy Jackson, uh, his mind is firmly on that, adding the couple of extra points from wide out here on the right hand side. What a picture that, that is! What a kick that is! We've spoken Paddy Jackson, before, just to make sure, and he's starting where sure he uh, left off last I'm week. Just that we've spoken to him. Just no reaction, Blair, please, okay? Thanks, Dixie. Just hold for a second, Tempo. Okay. Um, time off, Billy. <coughs> time off. Just time off, just seeing what's going on with the injured player. Well, barely That's time to take our seats yeah, and sort ourselves out off. that we have a try, we have a man going off injured. Guys, it's going to be a busy right afternoon here. this afternoon, I think. Okay, good to go. Here is Adam Coleman. Gloucester come forward, Reed, and this is it again, Gloucester, Henry Tender, oh my goodness, what, what is going on? We, we haven't done anything other than sort of take kicks and score tries. Use all these clearing, mate, we're getting no replays in the stadium, so that's why I'm asking, mate, please. 12 trees hangs this beautifully. Here's one now. Oh, it's Good again. work, Reed. On to Trinder. Trinder the fend into the corner. It's another score. Lovely offloading from Reed. Awareness to find Trinder. Good strength to stay in field. Penny for your thoughts, yeah. Mr. Kidney. Thanks. On the left hand side, 12 trees dissects the post as well. Of course, he does. It wouldn't be any other way. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, we're going to have to look through the internet here because I wonder if that's Time the in. fastest second try that we've had in the Premiership. The first one was quick, the second one just as quick, and we're kicking off again. Atkinson catches it. Should we have some rugby? Walker involved. Use it. No, he's not. He's going to try and box kick this again. Matthew's interested. Parton. Green waiting. He returns the favour. Okay. Willie yeah. Hines is still back there. Underneath the ball, he looks downfield, tries white, to create a white, bit of an white, angle white. for himself. It comes off the side of his boot. And Jackson is underneath it. Loader is with him, but Jackson says chase this. Bit of space here, forward comes Woodward. Great take from Jason Woodward. That was as safe as houses. Jamal Ford Robinson. We've played nearly a minute now and still haven't had a try. What's going on with this game? Okay, use it! Maybe we need a bit of this to temper everything. A little bit of caterpillar. Ludlow, 12 trees after this. Jackson's underneath it. Little step, but he's met by that welcoming party. Good Batman, chase. Batman. Sakupi Kepu thought he saw a gap. Phipps, Australians combining. Cowan, Hepatima, beautifully away from his man. Parton is down the left hand side. They combine again. Hepatima back inside. The big man, the Fijian. Albert Tuisui gets involved. Out the back door, Jackson looking for a bit of space, tries to keep the ball alive, no, not held, goes again. Phipps is digging. 
Hefatima again, stepping off that right boot. Seemingly no space, but he finds a little gap. Maffi. This is an electric game so far. Creevy. More international experience in this London Irish setup. One of the only men without that. Rogerson carries the ball forward. Maffi again. Again, makes a, a couple of extra yards when perhaps he could, shouldn't have done. Hefatima, good off Mo, quick ball, Phipps through the gap, grown up. He likes a try at the Brentford Community Stadium. Phipps again, good, quick ball, they're keeping it alive excellently. Phipps again, former Waratahs man almost towards the line. No, Lewis! Jackson, long ball over the top. Oli Hassel Collins out wide. Yep. Oh my goodness. Seven minutes, 21 points almost. With a kick to come, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting too excited. Oli Hassel Collins adds to the uh, to the list at the moment, which uh, is quite extraordinary. It was uh, relatively easily finished off, but this is all because of the great work, the speed with which they're able to recycle the ball. It creates these gaps out wide because everyone from Gloucester bites in. Brilliant vision from Jackson to find him, and he loves a try against Gloucester. Four in this game last season. Only Hassel Collins, and another one for him this afternoon. They need to tidy that up. The last thing they want is those front rowers having to scrummage an awful lot. Ludlow, nice ball for Heinz. This is 12 trees, bringing in Clark. Only his Tackle second out. start this season. He's been out for uh, a little while as Atkinson pops it up nicely from 12 trees, but forwards rules Tom Foley. I'll tell you what, Willie Hines is having a really good game. Um, talk spoke about his kicking game. But the delivery of this pass, I'm sorry, but it's 15 metres straight to Billy Twelvetrees. It's not just the accuracy, but it's the speed of that pass which allows them to be able to get their ball carriers into the mix. He's missed a lot of this season so far. As we've spoken before the game, it's his third start of the season, but he makes such a big difference, especially not just at this level, at the international level, where control is paramount. Yeah, he's... Um is making and has made, of course, a, a big difference. Hugo, what, what are the key things in your mind that Gloucester need to be doing to advance from this position? Well, they're playing with so much ambition, but the, you, ambition without control is often futile. So for me, it's just keeping hold of the ball. They are playing from deep, but they probably turn the ball over a little bit too much. Defensively, they've looked really good and put Bristol Bears under, under plenty of pressure. It's a long one. It's there a big go. one. Oh, dear. Picked off again by Carreras. Pins his ears back. In comes Lloyd. Carreras got the beating of it. In for his second. Two intercepts inside 25 minutes for the Puma. Mate, often when I say talk about defensive pressure, it's the commentator's curse. But off that play, they have been so aggressive in those wide channels. It's been the story of this opening half. Piers you can see what he's trying to do. He's treading water, treading water. And Carreras, once again, his positional sense and awareness and then his ability Four to later. pick off that ball and from a standing start where he's tripping over himself to get himself into fifth gear, Johan Lloyd is no slouch, neither is Piertau. Wonderful tries, as much as they have played for with ambition. There's the Waldock, there's the Duke, the defensive coach, absolutely thrilled with that. <laughs> We'll have a word with him in just a, a minute or two, but um, Siali Piatau is, is not happy with himself. Uh, we'll just take a look at Billy Twelvetrees lining this up. Dom, um, you'd be delighted to see your, your, your man who's newly arrived, scoring twice in double quick time. What are you making of the opening uh, salvos? It's, it's been a pretty high octane, uh, you know, first 35 minutes. You know, lo long ball in play time, so exhausting for both defences. But uh, a lot of attractive rugby being played, um, and, and Santi, Santi's producing some quality out there in the wing. Breakdown battle looks to be an interesting one. You've been turned over there a couple of times. Is that a concern for you at this point? Yeah, it clearly looks like an area they've targeted. Um, we just need to be more accurate in, in, around that area and protect Willie. Thanks for your time, Dom. Cheers.
I think the area that Gloucester are bossing at the moment is how controlled they are in defence. They all go up together as a line. Guerreras tread, treading water on that outside channel, not overshowing his hand. But because everyone on the inside had made sure there were no gaps, no one had come out of the line, it meant Bristol had to play into that wide channel, played into his hands, try scored. So look at a bit of an option here. Quick hands might do it. Beautiful offload, lovely soft hands on the pickup from Sam James. Valery Morozov. <sighs> Just as I was waxing lyrical about the hands, it is spilt by Dupree. Knock on advantage. Yeah. Another thump is going to have to come from the Harlequins kicking team. It's trapped underneath Yard's boot. Once again, they are back into the Harlequins half. Hammersley, the former Newcastle Falcon, played over a hundred times in the northeast and now enjoying himself in the northwest. Don Brandt, Don Brandt, nice feet for the big man, lovely inside ball. Brown accelerates on the outside is Joe Marchant. Joe Marchant for the corner, out of almost nothing. Harlequins have scored. They are an electric backline. And their forwards are bad too. Don Brandt with the initial. And Joe Marchant gets his try. He was the only back on the starting back line without a Premiership try so far. And on the occasion of his 100th appearance, Joe Marchant gets the meat pie he was after. But this is it. Lovely feet and lovely awareness from Don Brandt. He really is playing well at the moment. And uh, all the requisite pace was there from Marchant. Lovely score from the home side. Sorry, mate. Turnover. Will Evans again. My goodness, he does some work in the dark arts, doesn't he? Nobody scored more points than Marcus Smith in the Gallagher Premiership. This is a difficult one, especially with the wind the way it is. <laughs> He's got it. Rich vein of form, Marcus Smith. And the Centurion, Joe Marchant, scampering free once again at the Twickenham Stoop. A deep restart. And a good kick from Mike Brown. Brown's part in that uh, try was uh, obvious as well. He really is a, a grand high priest of Premiership rugby, isn't it? Thanks. Still going, still giving. Still, how many? Developing, Five. almost. Thanks, Joe. How does Sale respond? Beaumont tries to reach for it. Evans again pirouettes beautifully, grabs hold of the ball, and there's a little bit more zest in the step of sequence at the moment. Ball over the top from Esther Hazen. Morris, Marchand is sniffing once more, Marchand again, double quick time, Joe Marchand. He has multiplied his season tally in a matter of seconds. Check, kick chase, so David, Tempo, can you hear me? He's onside, so I can stick with the on-field try. <laughs> try there. Quick ruling from TMO, Thanks, TMO David Grasshoff. And all of a sudden, Harlequins have found the key to the door. And, well, we spoke about him pre-match, but Evans again, just proving his worth, gets them on the front foot. 
Ball out wide, shouts of forward, but Morris was having none of it, and the bouncing ball made a fool of Marlon Yard. And Marchant was its friend. Marcus Smith as well. well. I fear you may have sort of stepped away from this game and gone and grabbed yourself a cup of tea and come back a couple of minutes later and thought, well, what's, what's going on? It was all sale. And then in a, a couple of premiership flashes, Joe Marchant has, uh, has got a brace.